Hey, uh, I'm here with Ike. Hello. Of the Frisco Five. Ike, um, is there anyone you don't want to kill today? Is there anyone I, I don't so want to kill myself? <laughs> That's good. None of us want you to kill yourself. You're doing an amazing thing out here, and I'm so appreciative and grateful. Well, you're Thanks welcome. For being here. No Do you want to, um, I guess, tell the world what you're trying to achieve? Uh, well, I'm just trying to achieve, I mean, unity. I mean, I'm trying to achieve justice here um, for ah, for black and brown people primarily, you know, but for everybody, you know. Um, police brutality is just at an all-time high in San Francisco, in San Francisco especially. Right yeah. But I mean, it's a nationwide problem too, and we understand it's a culture, but it's a culture that we cannot allow to manifest into what it's becoming and. It's becoming like normal. Exactly, and it's they're sweeping it like under the standard. rug. Yeah, I mean, it's we, scary, dude. There's, I mean, imagine there there are people we don't even know about that have been killed by police officers. So when you take a look at even the ones that we do know, it's just an alarming rate. Yeah, you know, and you hear something, if not every week, almost it seems like every day. It yeah, seems it's like super scary. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I mean, I grew up in San Francisco. I'm a native, 42 years old, and I've Daniel never good. seen it like this. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying, <laughs> even out here, not showering. I smell like. You know I, what? I have to say, you smell pretty good. Yeah. You gotta you mention it. Well, I mean, you know, we get to sneak away Let's every so often and shower. I mean, there's a, someone was nice enough to let us use their house right around the corner. So I'll it's not know, like we I have to walk far. Yeah. You're a lot smellier than me. No. <laughs> I think I know a few too. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, I mean, it makes no sense to have people sworn to protect and serve the people of the community be the ones killing the people within that same community. Yeah. It's like when did using excessive force become the more important part of the job description, you know what I mean? That's right. Like, you know, protect and serve is, in, is the main I mean, They don't even try and talk us down in any situation. You know, in every video that you see, there, there's no like, okay, I'm here to help you, you know, I don't want to hurt you, I want you to come out of this okay. There's yeah. none of that. Yeah. There's none of that, you know, like, it's, it's like, like what's the difference of, of the person who's on the ledge jumping off of the roof? So what are you going to do? You're going to walk up there and then push them off? No, yeah. you're going to talk them down. It's the same thing with a person where they have a knife, a gun, or they're unarmed. Mm -hmm. But come on, they're, they're killing people that are unarmed. Yeah. The man, Alex Nieto, eating a burrito, people. Eating a burrito is, in a park. What is more sacred? Right than San before Francisco? he's going to work. This yeah. man is a security guard. <laughs> I was once a security guard yeah. at a place called 101 California. Mm -hmm. Google that place. 101 California, San Francisco, California. I'm not even going to tell you the history of that I place. Think I've but I worked there right after that incident happened. Uh -huh. So, hello. But anyway, we can't have this anymore in our community. We can't have this in any black and brown community across this nation. It has to stop. I'm so, I'm so humbled that this is going international, but it's I love a problem. How many people are here, even right now. Oh my God, I love it too. It's it's like this pretty much all day. And to tell you the truth, you, we have more people out here at nighttime. And we have to great. tell people to leave because we have to get our rest. Yeah. But people are here and we have people who actually sleep out here and watch over us so that nothing happens, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, the community is awesome. And it's sad and it's not at the same time that five people had to starve themselves for this to happen. Seriously. But, but it's a, a problem and, it, and it's an epidemic that we cannot let fester through our communities any longer and people have to take a stand and it takes know? a certain amount of hope right right because i think that's a big part of this and like when i read a, your article online i think in the so guardian or the weekly like just i wow. i don't know i didn't just read like anger even though we're all very angry still but i read like we have faith in the community we even have faith I mean, I feel this way. I have more faith in the community now than I ever did before. Exactly. And I think this is something 
that I don't know. I feel like, is there anybody you could ask? Hey, don't you wish that it was easier? to trust cops and I think right. everyone would be like yes, yes I wish I had good reason to I wish right. I felt more comfortable reporting stuff they're actually violent people and actual difficult situations right. and, and we get people that come by and be like oh I love the police department and they say it and I don't even think they understand why they're saying even what they're saying. I don't even yeah. think they even understand why we're even out here. Yeah. It's not that we hate police. We know all the police officers are not bad. Yeah. But the good cops aren't even coming out and speaking out upon this because of the brotherhood. Exactly. We understand we understand that part. There's you know, their police department is a clique. We understand that. Mm -hmm. But I have friends that even inboxed me and have told me that, you know, behind closed doors they have friends that are in the police department, they know that there's there are racist issues in the police department. Yeah, and, and it's, I feel like it's like probably they're like, I don't know how to handle this. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can't have people it's so that. It's so much, it's so big. Yeah, you can't have people that didn't grow up in even a hood setting mm -hmm. policing the hood. So they're basically living out all of those stereotypes and fears that they grew up with and so it's like it must be very triggering yeah i mean it's i don't i don't but i believe i do believe that there is potential for systemic change and i do believe that this yeah, is the kind potential. of this is the kind of action that after seeing what i've seen the last week there's definitely yeah. potential what else have you seen let's talk about that i mean we've seen I mean, we've seen a, a cascade of lowriders here in front of the police station park. Like, literally, from one end of the block down to half the way down the block. Uh -huh. On both sides of the street. Uh -huh. You know, before the police came out in their intimidating fashion, as always, uh -huh. it was like about 20 of them coming out to start writing tickets. Um, I'm sure if you go on, if you go on YouTube, I'm sure somebody, yeah, you, you go on YouTube, I'm sure somebody has it on YouTube, and the police officers come out, and even these barricades that they have out here against the wall, like we used to have our stuff there against the wall. The side of the sidewalk and shortly after doing that and, and no one ever tripped over anything we had out there except for like some sticks that we had on one of our banners and then we saw that we, we didn't want anyone to get hurt so we removed the sticks off of the street and that's why the sign is now taped to the sidewalk within 30 minutes of those things being out here and let me tell you how they even brought them out here there was a a, a motorcade of, of officers on their little moped motorcycles that came around the block about 15 of them literally 15 cops on motorcycles coming up this sidewalk and then a bunch of officers on foot bringing the um, the barricades and then them tying them down against the wall. And about 20, 30 minutes later, a 10 year old kid trips over it. Are you for real? I am serious. I swear on everything I love. That's crazy. And then they're telling us that we were part of, you know, blocking the sidewalk and this and that. And we, we have obeyed everything that they've asked us. You know, we even had a hammock. Is, they told us to take down the hammock. This is a super peaceful demonstration. It is. We, yeah. I mean, we're not out here trying to hurt nobody. We're not even trying to hurt ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, we all we want is for justice. We want a racist police chief to be taken out of office, to be taken out of his position. He didn't deserve the position to begin with. Mm -hmm. Take him out, put someone, and let the people choose who to put into that position because all they're going to do is cut off one head and you know replace it with another corrupt head we know that and that's why we have a lot of naysayers and we understand we're not idiots we're not doing this and then thinking like oh they're just going to replace one racist cop with another yeah. we know bring someone in here who's really going to make a change make a difference for the people for the people of the community that they have sworn to protect do you and have serve. anyone in like mind they actually do i'm bad with names i don't i don't remember who the person's name is i don't I can, so, I can try to Google it, but you actually yeah. do have, like, are they cops themselves? Or? They're, yeah, of course. There's going to have to be someone within the force, of course. So we, look, they've can. thought it through. Yeah, we've thought it all through. I mean, because I'm not the politician person, so I mean, if you talk to Edwin Lindo, I, I'm, I believe he, I mean, even um, Equip, though, I believe they both know who, the, who they're putting in. I mean, I don't know the uh, 
person's name like that. But but ultimately, it sounds like you just want to be able to live peacefully in your city. Basically, yes. And Especially after I, I just moved back here, after gentrification forced me to leave for three yeah. years. So, um, you know, after moving back, and then like a week after moving back is when they shot the homeless person. And yeah. that's when we decided to do the hunger strike, was after they shot um, Mr. Gongora. So, and when they're starting to kill homeless people, just stop. That's just telling you how much they want us out. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, it's too scary. And I have two, two children, ten and eight years of age. They're the primary reason I'm out here. Just, they like, must be so proud of you. I would I'm hope proud so. of you. It's not even your blood. <laughs> I'm well, really proud. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Hey, okay, let's. Let's work on it. Everybody pressure. Everybody's got to play their part. Please pressure Ed Lee. Yes. I think I have faith you can come around. He's my friend's friend's dad. Yeah, so you can someone Twitter tell, him, tell Facebook, her to tell her dad to fix the shit. <laughs> email. There's many ways to get a hold of Mayor Ed Lee. Or drop Please by. Tell him. Say thank you. Drop by. Yes, Leave room 202. Stock. In City Hall, San Francisco, California, right there on Grove. Thanks, Ike. Yeah, sure. You're awesome. I tried. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn this off now.